Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Cosmic Weather for February 2023. Holy smokes. We're in February. This is it. All right, friends. The first thing that I want to mention before we dive into the reading today is Astral Playground. If you haven't heard about it, I'm telling you about it right now because it it's it's taken on a life of its own, let me tell you. And it's funny because my best work, what I'm realizing is it's just this, oh, this would be fun, la, 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 la. And then I put it out and then all of a sudden it takes the world by storm. So if you have not checked out Astral Playground, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It's freaking amazing. The testimonials are out of this world. And it is daydreaming sessions, okay? So we get together every week and I guide you in a, an active daydreaming session. So I'm not teaching daydreaming. I'm taking you through an internal experience, an emotional and sometimes visual experience, although you don't need to have the ability to visualize in order for it to work. So it's just been one of the greatest things that I've ever created. The results have been out of this world. It's been so much fun. And for February, because we're heading into February, I thought it would be really fun to make it like a luxurious, romantic month. So we are going to be talking about love, although love is something that's really uh, broad in terms of connection, the type of love what type of relationships you're in. I want to do like an astral date night. I think that would be really fun to do at some point in February. Really making it just fun, romantic, luxurious, connected, and really getting into the love energy for this month. Valentine's Day is my favorite holiday in case you didn't know. Um, The candy is the best. It doesn't involve family Valentine's Day is supreme. I don't care. I don't care what anyone has to say. It's all the red flavors. How could you not like Valentine's Day? The red flavors are the best. Just the reds. That's it. No childhood trauma. No family obligations. Are you kidding me? That it is like God gave us the greatest holiday ever, and it is called Valentine's Day. Love Day? Yes, please. So, I want to do some fun stuff in Astral Playground, and I would love, love, love to have you. 30 bucks a month. It's stupid good. It's stupid good. They're so much fun. In my opinion, I think Astral Playground is way better than meditation sessions, like guided meditation, because it's just, it's way more whimsical, way more imaginative. It's been a blast. Like, I I was not expecting this to be so popular and so fun. And it's just really been the most pleasant surprise hosting these daydreaming sessions. So anyway, before I spend 10 minutes talking about Astral Playground, because it's that good. Oh, and, and you get access to all of the previous sessions. Okay. So consider that we've done one on success. So we've had like a magic carpet daydreaming session. We've had Rapid Solutions was a daydreaming session that we did. We had a spa day, like a replenishing, recuperating cosmic spa day in Astral Playground. It's awesome. It's awesome. Stupid, ridiculous, good price. And anyway, get in. Get in. All the cool kids are doing it, and it's super fun. So that is what I have for you there. Now let's get in. I'm going to tune in to what February has in store, and we will be on our merry way. So there's there's a couple things that are coming up right now. The first one is optical illusion. That is the first piece coming through. And what I'm getting for this is that it's the subtext of your desires and the subtext of your experience that's really being highlighted in February. So 
It really is that energy of not everything is what it seems on the surface, but most of the time when people say that, it's in the context of there's chaos occurring, but what's underneath it is growth and value and purpose and all of that stuff. This is the opposite. This is things things having uh, like a pair, you're, you're having two different experiences with the same situation. So it's like there's the surface layer of situation and then there's deeper meaning and value underneath it. But it's not reading as being very chaotic at all. I'm actually getting, for many of you, February is going to be a pretty temperate month. Uh, not tons of action. It's not reading as ultra busy. It's reading as being relatively calm. It's just that your interpretation of your own life. And this is dovetailing with what I mentioned in the 2023 cosmic weather as far as there is a shift in values. So this is deeper awareness, deeper realization, appreciation of the simple things that you have going on in your life. All It's like the small stuff is really heightened. The intensity and appreciation of the small things is really being put front and center in February. There is one thing that I want all of you to be aware of. I'm getting the message that it's really important to prioritize stress reduction. This is one of those things that we can kick under the rug for a long time. We can ignore it. We can say, well, it's not that bad. I'm not that stressed out. And what February is really encouraging and what I would recommend is double down on your tools now. Double down early. Stay on top of your nervous system regulation. Tend to tend to your maintenance in general, and that is really going to serve you across the board. This is going to be a good month to stay on top of your habits and routines that are really supportive to you. Not the rah, rah, rah new year. I'm going to force myself to do 10,000 things. This is looking very simple, practical. Take good care of yourself. Stay on top of things. Rest ahead of time, right? Take a weekend off before you are forced to take a weekend off, right? Usually through exhaustion or stress or some other uh, dissatisfying emotion, some negative emotion is what pings you into action. And I, I'm really getting for February, it's like you want to practice and really exercise maintenance, maintenance around the mind. So if you're in my programs, if you're in um, Money Magic or Slut Magic, we've been talking about mental mold quite a lot. Mental mold is a maintenance tool right? That is, that is something that we want to keep a close eye on and we want to use on a regular and consistent basis because it's a maintenance thing. It's you are maintaining your mind and making sure that you're keeping it relatively on track. There's going to be variability, but the more that we exercise, you know, uh, getting ourselves in the, the mental and emotional position we want to be in, the better set up for success we are going to be. And this is true of all things, right? This is, we we want to be proactive. And I think there's a lot of wisdom and gifts that are coming through for those who are really exercising a lot of productivity, or not productivity, proactivity in February. Rest before you get burnt out. Maybe do... Uh, consider your future self. What are some things that would really set up your future self that would be more helpful? What would help your future self? And then consider that version of you later. Say, what would future self really appreciate in this moment? What will I be saying to my past self and go, "Ah, thank you, past version of me for setting me up for success? Toggle with these different versions of yourself. The proactivity is part of the maintenance and stress reduction that is really wanting to come through. And this is also why I'm getting that uh, February is going to be more simple. 
It is going to be a lower energy in terms of external activity. You might be brimming with energy because every day is different. There's some days you're going to be full of energy and some days where you're going to be a little bit lower energy. But I'm speaking strictly from an external standpoint. This does not look like a chaotic month. And so you have this opportunity to really solidify some beneficial patterns for yourself, to establish new new ways of staying ahead of the curve. And what happens usually during downtime, this is what I wanted to mention. During downtime, a lot of people misinterpret that as boredom, and that's when numbing behaviors start. We talk about this a lot. You know, I'm the consumption fast queen. That's kind of just what has naturally occurred. But fasting is what reduces the numbing behaviors. And so February really wants to emphasize that just because it might be externally calm does not mean it's the time to start checking out. It's the time to set your future self up for success. Is this going to be good for me later? It's a good question to contemplate. Will this serve me later on? And I think that for many of you, what I'm getting is that this is going to start generating a lot of momentum. And what what I want to punctuate is that all of the things that you're desiring are a matter of momentum. All of this is energetic momentum. So capitalize on what February is giving you. February is giving you this really wonderful gift. It is saying, hey, there is this month where it's not going to be this external shitstorm. And with that, what are you going to do with the gift of time and space? Because if there's more spaciousness, that's the word. February is about spaciousness. Whether you get a little bit or a lot of it, all of you are going to be experiencing that differently. The bottom line is, how are you using it? If you are one of the people who feels like you are in a time shortage, this is going to apply to you even more. Then the message here is, how are you going to create spaciousness? Fasting is one of the ways, at least in consumption fasting, when we're doing apex, I tell people, I'm like, you are going to experience time in a different way because it's going to be really amplifying spaciousness in your life. And your work from that point is understanding how to navigate spaciousness without checking out, without numbing, without going unconscious or giving your energy, attention, and power to things that really are not going to serve you later. So when you can really make the most, if you have a 15-minute block of time, you make the most of that 15-minute block of time. Don't delay the proactive things that are really, really, really going to serve you later in favor of numbing. It's not worth it. And then the ironic thing is once you really start to develop this new relationship with time and spaciousness and understanding the connection between now and later or now and past, now and past decisions and choices and looking back on things in hindsight and being able to create those threads of this is how I served myself previously and it worked really well for me. The more you do that, the more momentum is going to generate and the more you are going to get excited by these threads of time where you're toggling between past self, present self, future self. And you're kind of all in this dance together. And so February is really saying there's a strong emphasis on the three different versions of you how they're interacting, and how you're using spaciousness. I'm getting, for many of you, one of the things that was happening in 2022 in particular was kicking the can down the road. 
I'm also in this camp. There were some things that I kicked the can down the road on as well, but it was prioritizing or taking the short-term bait of I'm going to numb now and I'll do that other thing later. So you were piling stress onto the future self unknowingly. And February is saying, do you want to redesign your relationship with that? That's the question at hand. And if you do, my God, it's really going to serve you for the rest of 2023. Because once you start this, the momentum is going to start going so rapidly that you're going to want more of it. You're going to want to experience more of it. And this is not about, I want to be clear, it's not about the task list. It's about, do I want to have read that book? Do I want to have gone to that dance class or hot yoga? Or do I want to have taken this weekend for myself? Do I want to have given myself the experience of being in a fasted state and being present with my family? Because these are also moments you have to understand that every moment is something that you have the potential to look back on. And this this also is one of the reasons why I feel so passionately about fasting is because when you're looking back on your experiences, when you're fasted, there's more value in them. They're more memorable a lot of the time. It just, it, it sheds a new light on things. And when you constantly have media pulling at you and different things that have your attention. And this is definitely true for those of you who are entrepreneurs. If you work on social media, it's so easy for your mind to go into creator mode. Uh, This is something that I've really been working on myself is like getting pulled out of the present moment and almost shifting into my teaching brain. Like how am I going to teach this, that, and the other thing wherever my mind wants to go. And really having to bring myself back into the present moment because I do not want to look back on all of these moments where I could have been present and said I was thinking about work. I do not want my life to be composed of that. Your now experience your now consideration of all versions of you, past, present, and future, looking back on past experiences and taking those wisdom, that that wisdom that was available and that came from those moments. Do I want to kick the can down the road further and put the burden on my future self? What happened last time? If the version of me last time kicked the can down the road and now I'm kicking myself for what I didn't do earlier because now this is amplified stress, it's it's inconsiderate of yourself. It's inconsiderate when it comes to your nervous system well-being, which we all know the nervous system is the root of all evil, at least that's what I call it. Because it's driving so many different experiences. It's driving so many of your bodily and mental functions that you have going on. And so not considering these things is the problem. And the more you consider them, the more you're going to anchor in the solution. So that's, that's really crucial in February is just understanding that you really do get to consider yourself more so. And through proper consideration and through proper proactivity with future self in mind, with what is going to be good for me, that is where things really start to get juicy. Because now not only are you accessing more presence and more pleasure, but now you're actually having this experience where there's there's more enjoyment in looking back on things. How many how many experiences did you have in 2022 where there's kind of this void, this black empty space where it's like nothing was happening. But the thing is, things were happening 
It's just that there was unconsciousness or kicking the can down the road or avoidance or I'm going to do it later. There, there was a mentality of later. And February is saying you've got to knock it off. There's there's a lot of rewards in this for you. There is a lot that can really serve you in the months ahead. We're already in February. Consider that. As you're listening to this, you're listening to this and February is approaching. Reflect on what happened in January. Were you numbing out? Were you being avoidant? Were you, were you trying to force things upon yourself and like suffocating the pleasure and enjoyment out of your life? Because that could also be true. If you were so fixated on goals and routines and regimens and took a very masculine approach, are you enjoying that or not? Are you, are you, as a whole, if you're looking at the collective experience that you had in January, are you enjoying this trajectory? Not the destination that you have in your mind, this unfolding. Are you enjoying this unfolding? And I'm getting February is going to be a great time for you to audit the experience of January and what you've been doing so far. Take the opportunity to audit And I'm getting so many of you are going to be having a calm time in February. Capitalize on it. Use it. Move some pieces around. Interact with the present moment in a new way. Come back to what am I doing right now? Is this serving me, bringing me joy, amplifying a positive feeling state? Am I telling myself a good story? Am I doing something that I love? Am I going to look back on this moment in pleasure, appreciation, satisfaction, fondness? Or am I going to look back on this moment with regret? Right? So when you start taking this frame of mind, then it it will really help you in terms of giving yourself grace if you're having a bad day. I don't if I'm having a bad day or I'm I'm in a really emotional place, I'm not looking back on that experience and telling myself, "Oh, you you shouldn't have been upset about that or you shouldn't have been crying about that." It's more about my navigation of those experiences. That's where either looking back on it with fondness and appreciation or regret really comes into play. It's the navigation of it. It's not, did I feel some negative emotion? And so bringing more consciousness into this is going to make a world of difference for not only how the month is going to go, but how you are going to experience coming months in 2023. I also, oh, there was another message here. Hold on, let me find it. It's exactly like you want to do it when things aren't busy so that when things are busy, when things are really externally active, when there is a lot going on, when it's high intensity, high action, you can handle it. And you're going to be interacting with it in a different way. You want to practice during the calm times so that when busy time comes, it's no big deal. And that's why February is a huge gift to many of you. It's, hey, there's this pocket of spaciousness that you have the ability to capitalize on. What are you going to do with it? What do you want to do with it? And then that is going to bleed into everything else. So this is true of so many things. Nervous system regulation is probably the biggest one, right? It Let's say you're super dysregulated, you're having a ton of panic attacks. Well, you don't want to practice regulation only during the panic attack. That's not going to work. You're not good at it. It's a skill you haven't developed. So you want to practice when you're already feeling relatively okay. 
You want to practice when it's boring. You want to practice when you don't need to practice so that the muscle is developed enough when you are super dysregulated, when a panic attack does come, then you know what to do. Then it feels more like second nature than you fumbling around because you haven't fully mastered the tool. February is the downtime that is, it's this pocket where you get to implement different structures and different tools and different things that you want to create that are going to potentially stand the test of time if you start implementing them more intentionally. Let me see if there's anything else. Really take an attitude of depersonalization in February. This is another thing that will really help you. Almost nothing is personal. Almost nothing. There's exceptions. That's why I'm saying almost. But the vast, overwhelming majority of the time, nothing is personal. And see what happens. I'm getting this is more for a select group of you who have been hypervigilant in certain arenas. I'm just getting that you have the ability to practice depersonalization. Here's a good question to either journal or contemplate. What if this wasn't personal? What would it mean? How would I feel if this wasn't personal and had nothing to do with me? How would I feel? What if this has nothing to do with me and my brain is just making a mountain out of a molehill? Play with that. And I, I'm getting that that's going to provide a lot of relief. You want to keep that in question. Like, what if this isn't a big deal? What if this isn't personal? What if, what if, what if? Move in that direction. It's really going to serve you. Okay, another message. Again, I don't think this is going to apply for everyone, but I'm getting for some of you, focus more on how you want to feel as something is unfolding rather than the outcome. This is almost backwards, okay, to what a lot of people will um, focus on when it comes to manifestation, like you want to focus on the outcome. This is actually shifting it a little bit off center, and it really is how do I want to feel as this inevitably unfolds in my life, right? So a really good example of this would be frantic or relaxed. Do I want to be frantic? Do I want to experience more franticness as I'm creating this? Or do I want to experience more relaxation as I'm experiencing this? And there is a connection to the how, right? Because there's a frantic how and a relaxed how. Or there's there's an unfolding that includes tension and force. And there's an unfolding that includes surrender and ease. And if you consider how do I want to experience the unfolding, it's actually going to highlight some feeling states that you may have not considered. Do I want this to be fun or do I want this to be hard? Do I want the stakes to be high or low? Do I want this to feel whatever? Insert some words. But just it's another way to check yourself because once again, With this emphasis on time, your relationship with time that's coming through in February, it's the unfolding is what makes up your life. And so just consider that is worth paying attention to. It's worth considering rather than just how do I want to feel in this end state, this end result when the money gets here. Of course, that'll feel good, of course, but there is more to it. So you want to look at the whole composition, not a granular single moment or experience, and that is going to really amplify some things. And this is also in the same strand of conversation about looking at the subtext, the subtext of what you want, the subtext of how you desire to feel or the holistic experience that you want for yourself. There's a lot of looking at the secondary layer or secondary gain that you 
that you're going to want to pay attention to. Flip the rock over. Look at what's happening underneath. You know, go a little deeper this month and and it will just it will clarify things for you. Uh, February has the potential to bring you a lot of clarity if you know where to look and you know what to pay attention to. So just give yourself permission to go there and have fun for the love of God. Enjoy yourself. Have fun. Prioritize that more. You'll be amazed. I've had people message me before when this message comes through and it's always present. Let's be clear. Having fun is always, always, always something that has the potential to, we we get to reconnect to. But when you deliberately focus on it, you might be really shocked and surprised by what comes through. I've had people send me the most incredible messages like, oh, this money came through and I wasn't even doing anything but focusing on having fun or I had this, that, and the other thing happen, or I've been having the best time with my partner, or all of this stuff that matches fun gets thrown into the mix when you're focusing on having fun. So that's a great default emotion for you in February. Keep it light, keep it fun, and uh, be willing to look at what's underneath. Go deeper in what you're looking at, but look at it with a light heart. That's kind of the sweet spot that you want to strike with yourself in February is it doesn't need to be ultra serious. We don't because that that adds weight to everything. But we also want to kind of get to the heart of what we desire and the heart of what we want and what we're going for. It's 333 in this moment sharing this magic with all of you. And that's where I'm going to wrap up. This feels complete. I hope you've enjoyed this message. If you feel that someone needs to hear this or if it resonated for you, I would really appreciate it if you shared it, if you comment, like, send to your friends, all of that good stuff. Let me know how this landed for you in the comments. Send me a message, send a podcast submission, whatever. And I am sending you all the love. I will see you in Astral Playground if you're there. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful February, everyone. Any of the classes, anything that I've mentioned, they will be in the description box or the show notes. And I will talk to you all next time. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.